Father, we thank you for the food. Please help us distribute it out. Wow. We ask you to look after our people in our queue. We hope that one day everything will go back to normal. Amen. 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 Right, okay, let's go. Right. This government, well, is a joke. It's very difficult to survive. If this wasn't here, oh, yeah, I'd go hungry at you. You don't feel there's anyone at the top who understands this. I don't think they care. They don't care about the worst off. They only care about big business. He's been talking to big business. They don't feel really cared for either. In the race to become Prime Minister, the starting pistol... As the UK's has... Conservative government has gone through a huge political convulsion, we've spent a lot of the last month visiting seemingly middling, comfortably off places you wouldn't think of as being disadvantaged or left behind, but that tell us a lot about this country's endless state of crisis. We're all feeling it at the moment. You could say the quietness in the town. When I do my weekly shopping, £400, it's gone up to £700. That's nearly double. That's nearly double, bud. So how's life? Uh, life is alright, after Covid. It's not too bad, I wouldn't say. How's life at the minute? I mean, money-wise and money -wise. all that stuff. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Do you rent where you live? Yes. And has your rent gone up? Yes. How much? Around twenty two hundred pounds. A month? Yes. After Covid like everything changed. Well it's difficult. Yeah, very difficult. You're having to count every penny and... Yes, yeah. Really? Yes. What do you do? I work in, as an accountant. This is a dead zone man. I think we just have to show that it's part of the story how quiet it is. This is what affluence looks like in modern Britain, man. Well, she was getting bread from there. What well, should we go and just go in and ask him? Ah, right. Now that is interesting. Today, Friday, Mondays and Tuesdays, we provide free hot food. We now get up to 40 individuals that are queuing out there from about 10 o'clock in the morning, ready for us to open at 12. I'm on benefits. I can't work with when I'm looking after a child full time. I just really struggle to because I don't get much. It grows so quickly and I have to buy new clothes and I'm like scrounging around for pennies. And what about housing? I've been here four months. I'm on my own with a baby in a refuge for domestic violence. Like, you would think that I was priority. They haven't even accepted me. Right, right. Okay. And your sense sort of looking ahead? I just don't know at this point. I feel like there's no hope for anything. Are you finding things more difficult than you were six months, a year oh, ago? Oh, bloody hell. No comparison. I'm not even putting the heating on at the moment. I'm wearing an extra fleece. I'm, I'm watching two hours of television, Max. God, so if you're watching it that closely that you're rationing the amount of TV you watch? Yeah. I would think of Basin Stoke as being a sort of comfortably off, affluent sort of place. It was. I moved down here in 1994 to work for Motorola. And at that time you had IBM, Eli Lilly, Motorola, and that dwindled down. Well, look at the town centre, look at here. You know, the amount of places that are closed. Well, we got on Twitter and said we were coming to Basingstoke. Someone called Damon said, my hometown, it feels like every time I go back, another charity shop has opened. The one-time dream of trying to twin the town with Dallas, seriously, is now a distant memory. Wow, look, that is empty. I'd say at least half of these are empty. Is that empty as well? We're in Basing View. This was a sort of purpose-built business district of Basingstoke that at one time were full of people working in big offices. And this whole swathe of it are now completely empty. It's like a sort of ghost corner of town. This is one thing we resolved we were never going to do again. What come to comfort? Precisely. Just couldn't keep away, man. No, I could. I very much could keep away. It's as if somebody sat down and tried to create the oddest environment imaginable. Everyone's talking about the roof. 
and everyone's talking about, they're talking about the plan, they're talking about, uh, not everyone agrees uh, with some of the elements of the plan, but everyone's talking about growth. There's very little natural light. Everyone, just about, all the men anyway, is wearing a suit. And nobody's having what you and I would understand to be normal conversation. <laughs> this country is great at getting out of problems like this. The UK always bounces back. And then to cap it all, these messages are put up to make sure they sort of burrow into your brain. Get in Britain moving. It's the weirdest thing. You've just spent a lot of time in Beijing stuff. Okay. Which outwardly you think was very active. I'm Beijing. Are you? Yes. Full of empty shops and empty offices. And that's after 12 years of Conservative government, right? So Beijing is quite a complex story. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm from Basingstoke, so I know that I know that I'm, I'm a Basingstoke councillor. Basing View, yeah. Festival Place, the Camrows, and the Leisure Park are completely disastrous, outrageous uh, litany of uh, failure. Wow. So did you bugger it? Not you personally, but did the council? Well, I, I've never been in the cabinet. <laughs> would have been I'm a backbencher. Would have been different if you of were in charge. Of course it would. <laughs> I will not allow the anti-growth coalition to hold us back. Labour, the Lib Dems, the SM, militant unions, vested interests dressed up, the talking time. heads, the Brexit deniers, extinction rebellion. Most political speeches cause a fuss for about two or three hours and then vanish into nothing, but it feels like that one's pulled off the trick already. This is like an accelerated prime ministership, isn't it? Everything happens ten times as quick as usual. <laughs> We have helped people with their energy bills. We have shown the green. And that's what I really liked about that speech. She talks about growing the pie. Hello, Chris. See you, mate. Keep me Always at these things. There is a sense of a yawning gap between what happens in there and the outside world, but <laughs> now it feels like the Grand Canyon. Usually, even the most workmanlike political speeches say, well, the other day in Sutton Coalfield, I met Stan. Stan runs a butcher's shop. Nothing like that at all. Worcester. Sad day for rugby in England. Thoughts with all of the Worcester Warriors player staff supporters. The RFU continuing to speak He's to also administrators. He's sent a message to the governing bodies of rugby saying something needs to change so this doesn't happen again. Other news and Liz Truss has told the Conservative Party conference she's ready to make the... Well, Worcester's got a particularly bad dose of, uh, of the British malaise today. Because this is a city that's just lost its rugby union club. I think that's probably registering more than Liz Truss's speech around these parts. Anyway, there's a chip shop here. Unusual for you then, Colin? The banter we have in here, we discuss Putin, we discuss everything. We talk about politics. In politics, <laughs> everything. And if the chippy wasn't here, how would you feel? If the chippy wasn't here, where would I go? Thank you very much. See you next week, Colin. And this is the oldest fish and chip shop oldest in Worcester. Fish and in Worcester. 92 years and never been closed. Everything that you need to run a fish and chip shop has gone up hugely Everything in price. Or, I mean, Brexit is main problem, what I think. Because lots of these things we import from Europe. Go on, yeah. give me an example. Your cod. Price of cod is double. It's coming from Denmark. Are you going to remain in business? It must be almost impossible. It will, will be impossible. It will be um, impossible to remain stay. Politicians talk about the cost of living crisis. Do people mention that a lot? Does it come up in conversation? Yeah, they, they are. Yeah, we talk about prices. But, you know, in England, these people are just talking. They're not making any changing. <laughs> but, not, but yeah, that's true, honestly. But we never yeah. do anything about it. But no, but what, what's we done now in the last few months to stop this madness? Can you tell me? Nothing. Three shops already closed in the Worcester. In the uh, three three chip shops. Fish and chip shop. Because of the cost. It's upsetting. Yeah. Very good chips. Right, thank you. We'll spread the word. Thank you. The bottom's fallen out of everything, hasn't it? Senior figures in the Conservative Party are trying to gather the support of at least 100 MPs. Right, Liz Truss has now resigned after 44 days as the Prime Minister. <laughs> well, we've come back to Basingstoke. I think Basingstoke promises to say something very sort of strong and powerful about the state of the country and also why politics is such a chaotic state. Because it's not just about, or mainly about even, intrigue at the top and who's up and who's down, is it? As ever, there are, there are very deep things going on here. I feel like I've been walking around this place for about 10 years. <laughs> 
We don't just go looking for empty shops, but there's usually a bit more going on. There's a lot more going on here. Oh, yeah. Here we are. We make things that go in and out, up and down, round and round. This ultimately is for Arm and Animators. Wow. So this is all for the film industry. These have got a corrosion resistant coating on them. It's a service that you can only get in Germany. It should take four weeks. It took six months because the German company don't know and don't want to fill in the paperwork that UK customs required to get it back into the country. Your costs must have gone up. Costs have gone up massively. A couple of years ago, basically a thousand pound of shipment. Now it's in excess of three thousand pounds. Are you a smaller business than you would have been had Brexit not happened? Great question. Potentially, yes. Or we haven't grown as much as I would expect. You were saying that the key to reviving the economy was deregulation and getting rid of red tape, you know, diminishing people's rights in the workplace and, and all the rest of it. I mean, if that happened, would that, would that make things better for you? Well, that comes back of a moral issue, doesn't it? Is do you really want to treat people like dirt or do you actually actually respect people? We take on apprentices, we respect people here, we train them, we develop them. Successive governments have always been about self-interest and short term. Okay, and I actually think now that osmosis gone through to industry and I think industry managers are now scared or bullied to make the right decisions because people are only worried about profits in the very short term. It's a cheeky question. Yeah. Have you ever voted Conservative in the past? I have in the past. Would you vote Conservative next time? No. All the best. Thank Thanks a lot. Take care. I don't think they understand the gravity of the crisis here, about just how much we have hit the wall, right? Or the nature of it. And they haven't got any convincing answers to it. Standing there saying growth, growth, growth isn't the answer. Neither is, well, let's get out of the EU. This country sort of falling over is something that's been slowly building for, what, at least 10 years. And the rest. 15, 20, 40. This is a long story. This government, well, is a joke. With all the cutbacks for children's care, our foster children, it's very difficult to survive. What's hard? Bedroom tax. I'm in a free bedroom house on my own, and I have to pay 150 a month for two bedrooms I don't even go in. And they won't move me because of rent arrears. Wow. So they've just got me in a vicious circle. A landlady's put our rent up a yeah. couple times as well. Yeah. Your rent's gone up recently. Mm -hmm. Financially, how are you coping? <laughs> uh, well, we wouldn't be here Scraping we, the pennies. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, scraping the pennies. All of those things that we talk to people about down the years, like the fact the benefit system doesn't work, the housing is in such a mess, you know, and all that. It's sort of turned critic. This way. Wow, this needs a lick of paint, doesn't it? That's the state of sort of um, suburban, supposedly affluent Britain, isn't it? Massive branch of Waitrose, one minute in that direction. And here, you've got a decaying underpass straight out of the late 1970s. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry to disturb you. How's life at the minute? Tough. Tough. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been without hot water or heating for seven months. How come? Because that way I'm not using any gas. So then I can build up a bit of a buffer for the winter. I'm stuck in a hard situation. Um, I had four boys and they've left home. And I'm being hammered by the bedroom tax. It's quite a thing in Basingstoke, the bedroom tax. My neighbour over the back, she's got the same issue as me. Her boys have left home and she's being hammered with the bedroom tax. I mean, I have to go... I'm in M&S at three o'clock every day because that's when they do their reductions. That's how I eat. I have whatever they reduce in that day. Do you think of Basingstoke being quite a, a comfortably off sort of town, you know? A lot of it is, but a lot of it isn't. That's the sort of central symbolic fact of here, isn't it? Is that we've had so many conversations with people who, who are living in the midst of acute housing problems, you know? Their lives are so unaffordable, they haven't had the heating on or hot water for months, say. At the same time, as every time you set off and begin to walk around this place. All you encounter is empty space. This is a real watershed moment for this country, isn't it, in various ways? The thing is, we know what's finished, but I don't know if, if we know what's coming along. Don't start quoting Gramsci. I'm not going to quote Gramsci. I don't understand this, do you? 
Well, that's an exit sign there. Where? Down here. These <laughs> fucking car parks. <laughs> Proceed to the route. Yeah, proceed to the route. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, I've got mad. This is a metaphor for modern Britain. The financial markets have reacted calmly to the news that Mr. Sunak will be Britain's 57th Prime Minister. An economic package prepared by Jeremy Hunt is due to be outlined in Parliament next month.